Good evening, darlings, um, and welcome to another episode of Cooking with Rondwil. I know it's been an awfully long time since um, I've put out any videos, and there's a number of reasons for that. But what's important to know is that I am back, at least for the time being. And, um, you know, it's getting quite chilly. We, we, we've had quite a bit of snow here recently, um, almost 30 centimeters, close to a foot. Um, so I thought, you know, why not make um, homemade pizza? And of course, I've made um, the pizza dough on this program before, but I thought, why not show you how to make the, the cheese? So I'm actually going to be using a mix of two cheeses I've bought in artisanal um, mozzarella, which um, I'm not going to be making, but the other cheese I want to make tonight um, is actually going to be the ricotta. So um, it's very simple. Most of the ingredients are already um, in your kitchen. So you're going to need um, a half gallon of milk. Um, you can use uh, the low fat, but don't use um, non-fat milk. Uh, you need some of that milk fat in order to make the product. Um, you'll need either um, white wine vinegar, um, white vinegar, citric acid, lemon juice, something really acidic. Um, for this, I'm just going to use white vinegar because I'm out of lemon juice. I, I like lemon juice a lot, um, or sometimes I'll do half and half. So you'll need a third of a cup of the vinegar, lemon juice, whatever you want to throw in there. Um, and then usually just do a teaspoon of salt, but I want to make an herb ricotta because I've had um, a lot of luck with it. So um, some pepper, which I'm going to fresh grind, and then this is a mix of um, basil and oregano. So I'm going to add those in too. And then of course you'll need something to strain. I'm using um, a colander, and then um, this is one of the, the sort of flour sack towels. They're absolutely dreadful for everything else, but they're really good um, to use instead of cheesecloth. I find that you get a little bit smoother product, so um, that's all to come later. So, first things first, you want to get your milk up to a boil. Um, now, it's important to make sure that you'll, you do it on sort of a medium-low heat. Uh, if you do it too high, you're going to burn the milk and it's going to burn to the bottom and it sort of changes the flavor of your cheese. So you want to try to bring it up um, more slowly if you can. And um, it should come up to 200 degrees centigrade, which is about the, the beginning of a boil. So if it starts to go really quickly, um, you'll want to just sort of remove it from the heat and stir it for a moment. Um, but I don't think we'll have a problem with that here. So um, you do also want to be careful to keep an eye on it because you don't want sort of a skin to form on the top before that boil occurs. Otherwise, again, it's going to sort of change the way that your cheese is going to work. Now, it takes just a few moments for um, for the water to actually, uh, the, the sorry, the milk to heat up to a boil. Um, and then once we add the acid, it's going to take and different guides will tell you differently, but I usually like to let it wait at least um, 25 minutes, um, but 30 works as well. And then the straining time, again, it depends on, on how sort of solid you want. Some people like a little softer ricotta, so you want to um, take it off the strain earlier, but I like it to be hard, you know, I just prefer things to be hard. So um, I'm going to probably let it drain for about um, 35 to 45 minutes um, and I'll show you all how to do that so we're just going to sit back right now and um, we're going to go ahead and just let the milk uh, come right, up to darling, us. so you can see we're starting to get just a little bit of a boil going here I want to make sure that I'm stirring it often because I don't want to get anything sort of burnt to the sides milk notorious for um, sort of getting skins and burning to the side, so you want to make sure you're also scraping down all along the edge of your pot, like so, just to make sure nothing is going to be stuck there. And then we're going to um, prepare now the, um, the acid, so let's just go ahead here. So we have our measuring cup, and we're going to be doing a third of a cup of the acid, so Let's go on ahead. Alright, 
So as you can see, it's now starting to boil. So I'm actually going to turn the heat off. Um, we're going to pour in our acid very slowly. Start that chain reaction there. Um, you want to get in your your herbs now. So I have my salt, which you want about a teaspoon. And just a little grinding of the pepper. And then you want about two tablespoons worth of your herbs. Okay, and then very gently, you want to start stirring it so that things will start to separate. So we're just going to very gently here, stir. And you'll begin to see it sort of separating now into curds and whey. Now, I'll take this opportunity to mention that um, you can actually, once you're straining your cheese, to, to keep the whey, um, which works sort of like um, sort of a sour milk byproduct, um, which if you like to make pancakes, if you like sourdough pancakes or bread, absolutely delicious if you save that. Um, of course, because I've done sort of savory herbs, um, you know, you could, you could do a savory cake, sort of like um, a hot cake, but savory, you could do that with this um, with this way, but you can't really do um, a traditional sweet, uh, I suppose you could if you're adventurous, um, pancake with that. So now, um, while we're waiting for that to separate, um, what I'm going to do is set up the cheesecloth, or in this case, the, um, the flour sack bag. So you want to sort of lay it out so that you get as much surface area covered as possible. So just kind of gently put it in. Now this is extremely large, which isn't really ideal because of course all that moisture is just going to get everywhere. Um, but if you have like half the size, you could, if you wanted to, fold if you have one of these outrageous bags, um, towels, then you could just do it over in half like that. But I find these short sides because I like to sort of, um, we're going to be sort of twisting to get a round shape to our cheese. So it's going to make it a little bit more difficult with the smaller sides. So I just try to be a little bit more careful when I'm pouring, um, when we pour this, the curds and whey out into the strainer. Now, if you are trying to save your whey, I suggest what you do is you get um, another bowl and set it in the sink underneath. Um, set this on top um, or, or pot, um, if you have another pot that works very well. Um, and then you can just strain over that but because I put so many herbs in, I'm not, I know it's so wasteful, usually I like to save it anyhow, but um, I just don't have anything else. I have way too much bread in the house. So we're going to go ahead and just strain it the old fashioned way, which is absolutely awful. So please forgive me, darlings. But that is what we're going to do. Um, so I'm going to go ahead, clean up, finish this glass of wine, um, and then we'll come back to strain some cheese. All right, darling, so um, it's sat for 20 minutes now, um, sort of separating. So we're going to go ahead now and pour it off um, into our cheesecloth. So let's go ahead and do that now. So make sure to keep your edges out of the way. And then as you can see inside the pot, there's still some more cheese in there, so you want to make sure that you're getting all of that to some of that is um, going to be the best cheese. Another thing I sort of forgot to mention, um, if you can use a non-stick surface, because like I said, milk is notorious for sort of sticking to the edges, particularly after the separation, you'll always find there's something there. So at least when you have the non-stick surface, it sort of comes off a little bit um, without too much trouble. So I do recommend um, for you to do that. You can see the level sort of going down, so what you want to do is sort of grab the edges and sort of help to get that excess moisture to come sort of out. It's sort of rolling it a bit. You 
dripping here, it's sort of draining off into the sink there. And then once it sort of settles out so that there's not really too much more liquid, that's when you're going to start to, um, to twist it. So why don't we go ahead now and do that. So sort of pulling up all of the edges in turn. Right, so you have sort of a bag like this. You can see it's still straining quite a bit. And then you just want to sort of start to twist. Make sure to use, you know, you have a round side here, so you can use that sort of to your advantage to press the water out. Now it does take a little while, particularly if, you, um, if you've got a lot of curds, sometimes it's a little bit more difficult to get the way out of them. But you're just simply going to be doing this until it seems like the bulk of the moisture, it shouldn't, you can see it sort of looks like it's a little liquidy pillow. You want it to sort of feel like there's some solidity to it, and then we're going to let it just sort of sit in this shape and strain out. So just about there now. It's feeling pretty good. So I'm just going to let it sit just like this for another, you can leave it anywhere from 10 minutes to an hour. Um, but like I said before, I prefer sort of the 25 minute to uh, 40 minute range. All right, darling. So I actually let it go for 45 minutes because I was just doing all the other prep. Um, I have the pizza here. Um, ready to go into the oven, the mozzarella is cut, the other toppings. So let's go ahead now and take a look at the cheese itself. So I'm going to give it one last little press now and then open it up. And as you can see, it's it's still rather soft, but I don't want it to be too firm, as I said before, because we are going to be sprinkling it um, on top of the pizza. Mm. But it's very good. It's nice and creamy. Not, it's not too salty, um, but of course, if you do want more salt, um, you know, especially when you're baking, you usually want to do a little bit more. I would suggest either putting it in and mixing it. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to put it on the pizza and then sprinkle um, herb salt on top of it. So it's going to sort of do all that for me. So let's get in here with a, some handful of cheese. I'm just going to spread it around. Um, and it's also very good if you're doing um, lasagna. Um, I really like doing the, the herb ricotta for that. Um, and again, if you are going to be doing it in the lasagna, I do recommend um, letting it be a little bit softer um, just so that it's it's going to spread a little bit easier um, you could actually spread this with a knife if you want to um, I'm just sort of crumbling it um, to give even coverage but um, but yeah that's that's all there is to it darling so it's it doesn't really take all that much work to make the ricotta um, you know it's a lot of sort of waiting um, but really the chemistry just does it all for you as long as you keep an eye out in the beginning when you're boiling it um, there's really nothing else to it um, actually because of the the waiting time it's it sort of marries well with um, the the rising time for bread or um, the production of, of homemade pasta if you're you're going to do raviolis or something um, tortellinis um, just the, the timing tends to work out really well, so I highly recommend that. And here you have it, darlings, an artisanal, uh, seasonal mushroom and herb vegetable pizza. Um, the underlayer has things like capers and eggplant, ground herb chicken, and then of course on the top an assortment of local mushrooms, and the mozzarella and the ricotta and some basil and some more herbs and of course a tomato sauce because you can't go wrong with that right so thank you all for joining me again on another lovely episode of cooking with thronduil um and i do hope to see you all again soon so until next time darlings cheers and ta-ta